the previous episodes on combat went over some general rules related to attacking and mob behavior. This episode will focus on breaking down attacks and how animations work. Just a warning, it'll be more nitty gritty and probably more boring than the other episodes, focusing on explaining specific mechanics in the game rather than being a how-to guide. All mobs that can attack have an attack animation. While it seems like an obvious thing to say, the reason for stating this is because knowing the details of its animation is important. First of all, almost every mob in the game will stop its idle, movement, or any special animation when its attack animation begins. Attack animation is the motion the character takes when attacking, or the visual part of the attack. This is the overarching category. Attack rate is the frequency of attacks. This can be split into two subcategories, attack speed and attack delay. Attack speed is how fast the animation plays out, which means how fast the attack will register its hitbox. Most mobs attack almost instantaneously, while others take a little while longer to wind up, giving you more time to react. Attack delay is the amount of time it takes to recover from the attack, or the amount of time in between attacks. Attack range is the length of the attack, essentially how big the hitbox is. If you're in range of it, you take damage. If any of these terms or definitions are confusing, the following clips and explanations will provide more details. The instant your character moves within range while holding down the attack or force attack key, the attack animation will begin. The duration of the animation is how long your character is locked in place before being able to take another action. This means that if you attack at an inopportune time, you may find yourself getting hit by an enemy because you're locked into the attack animation without any means to counter it. Just because the animation is very fast doesn't mean those milliseconds don't matter. Before I talk about attack rate and range, I'd like to make a segue about animation cancelling, starting with enemy or automatic animation cancelling. Getting hit will cause your character to display the received damage animation. This animation will automatically interrupt and cancel your movement and attack animations, which is what many players describe as being stun-locked. The more enemies, the more frequent this animation will play, and the more likely an interruption will occur. The more times your character continues displaying the received damage animation, the less control you have over your character, and in most cases, will lead to death due to being stuck in place and unable to complete your attacks to kill your attackers. In the clip, you can see that the number of attacks Wilson is able to get off is increasing as the number of hounds decrease. This is because his attack animation isn't automatically being cancelled by the enemy's attack. While it's highly unlikely you'll ever find yourself in a situation where you're tanking so many at once, the clips do show you an extreme example of how and why your attacks aren't working, and why you should try to mob, leash, and isolate mobs as much as possible. On the other end of the spectrum, there's player or manual animation cancelling. You can cancel most animations by inputting a command that changes your character's animation, which resets the delay. For example, if you allow your character to automatically farm by holding down the interact key by default spacebar on keyboard, then your character will take its time to play out the entire animation when farming. If you input another command that changes your character's animation, then you can skip the latter portion of the animation, or just cycle the animation faster. On the left side, Wilson is farming the trees by holding down the interact key, so he's automatically chopping like a normal person. On the right side, Wilson is frantically mashing left click like a maniac, which results in faster chops if your timing is good. If you mess up, like Wilson did several times in the clip, you can accidentally move away and cancel your chop, or even click a bird flying across the screen, which could slow down your farming to the point where normal chopping is faster. Done correctly though, it'll speed up your farming, but the sheer number of inputs makes it prone to mistakes. However, not all animation cancelling is that difficult. A simple sidestep will suffice most of the time. Here, Wilson is building a structure. Moving away will cancel the building process. The next two clips are of Wilson shoveling up that mess he made earlier. On the left side, he's normally interacting so the animation fully plays out. On the right, Wilson is animation cancelling by moving the moment the stump is shoveled. Even more than the tree example because it's easier to execute, you just simply move. You can see the difference in speed between animation cancelling the shovel. And of course, since the received damage animation is also an animation, you can cancel that too just by simply moving to get away from mobs. Alright, let's bring it all the way back to breaking down attacks. We're on attack rate. 
Attack speed is how quickly the attack goes off. Some enemies deal damage almost immediately after their attack animation starts, while others take a little longer. In many cases, it comes down to a couple of frames, but these couple of frames will matter when you're kiting. There are also cases where mobs attack multiple times before going into attack delay. The prime example is the tentacle. Tentacles will attack twice before going into attack delay. Attack delay is the time between attacks. During an enemy's attack delay, you have the opportunity to counterattack with your own attacks. Attack delay is only present when you use the attack command, and not when you use an interact command like chop or dig. This means that animation cancelling is not an option when attacking, so you can't speed up the frequency of your attacks. Knowing what a mob's attack delay is will significantly help your kiting. Eventually, it'll become muscle memory with practice. Attack range is both the maximum range of an attack and the maximum distance a unit can be from another to issue an attack command. This may sound like a very convoluted way to explain it, but it does accurately describe how range works. For example, when a mob walks up to you, the moment it reaches the maximum distance it can issue an attack, it will attack immediately. This can be used against the mob by quickly running into its range to bait out its attack and force it into attack delay. Most enemies have very short attack range, which can seem deceptive due to their size, so it takes some time to grow accustomed to these ranges to take advantage of the delay. However, in some cases, specifically with ranged mobs, their attacks will exceed the range from which the attack was executed. Let's say the mob attacks you from 5 range away, but the attack actually reaches 7 range away. In these cases, you need to consider that the mob has already gone into attack delay and is recovering from the attack, but you haven't yet cleared the attack range yet. Another example is the tentacle. In this clip, notice how Wilson is outside of the tentacle's range, but the tentacle is still attacking. This is because after the tentacle unburrows, the maximum range it can initiate an attack is extended further than when it's underground, resulting in it constantly attacking even though it can't hit Wilson. This is an extreme outlier. But still, it's an example of how the game separates attack range into two separate categories. So why does it matter to understand these distinctions? Well, sometimes a mob's stats don't tell you the entire story. A mob can share the same attack rate as another, but will have longer attack range or a quicker attack speed. This means that the amount of times you can counterattack will generally be the same, but it may be off by several frames, which means that you have to factor that in when getting to a safe distance away from the mob when kiting. A good example of this is the tall bird. Tall birds, werepigs, hounds, and several other mobs have the same attack rate. These mobs can be attacked twice during their attack delay. However, tall birds have a faster attack speed, which makes their damage go off sooner. The tall bird's attack speed makes it so you have to immediately run back to attack it the moment its attack animation ends. And also, make sure you're already at a distance when its attack animation begins. If you're too slow, you may find yourself suddenly missing 50 HP from a powerful pack attack. In the above clip, the first frame is the Werepig and the Tallbird in their movement animations. They're both in range of Wilson, and will attack immediately after their attack delay ends. The second frame, immediately after the first, is the beginning of their attack animation. The Werepig lowers its arms, the Tallbird's eye turns red. Notice how even though they begin their attack animation at the same time, the tall bird's attack registers first. These kinds of nuanced differences in mob animation could explain why you feel like you've kited perfectly, but still got hit. Any part of the mob's attack animation could be slightly different to create a scenario like this. As you play the game more, we'll figure out these nuances and we'll better adapt to them. While it is possible to play the game at a high level without understanding these minute details of how animations work, it doesn't hurt to be aware of the mechanics of the game. Applying the information in this episode to your gameplay, as always, will take time. Most of it is passively understanding how things work, since it doesn't specifically tell you how to do a certain thing, like most guides. But I believe that understanding these intricacies will help you understand the game better so that your overall performance will be more consistent and your chance of survival will grow stronger. Thanks for watching, and remember, don't starve.